I'm traveling around my home country of Namibia. I left the country as a child and grew up in Germany, but I sometimes come back to visit. Now, 20 years after independence, I want to find out what's changed. My first stop is the coastal city of Svakopmund, where I've arranged to meet Elisabeth de Beer. Her travel agency says it allows visitors to get a look behind the scenes. And for the first time, I'm in a Namibian township, Mondessa. That's still unusual for whites. I'm welcomed by someone playing a kudu horn. Elizabeth introduces me to the Cambrodies. They live in a brick house, a bit of a luxury. When I was a child, there was strict separation between the different ethnic groups. Now, Ovambos live alongside Hereros, Damaras or Namas. But tradition still plays a big role. Josephine Cambrodi makes medicines out of roots and herbs. She says there used to be few doctors for them. She's speaking in the click language of the Nama. Namibia is a land of many tongues. Josephine says everyone is now equal. They can now sit at the same table with whites and eat and drink with them. I visit the local kindergarten because I'd like to know what opportunities exist for the next generation of Namibians. Teacher Anagret Maletsky sees things positively. Speaking in Afrikaans, she says life has improved for children especially. She says there were no kindergartens like this one 20 years ago, no integration in the schools. Now everyone can learn everything. But this too is part of Namibia, the especially poor area of Mondesa. Official statistics say more than half the country's population is unemployed. Many of those have only occasional work. What surprises me is that the people I meet here are satisfied anyway, and they no longer see any differences between the various ethnic groups. They say relations with whites have got much better too. Cleopatra Cavasis tells me that Namibians feel free in a free country. They can travel and live wherever they like, and there's no war. She says that gives her hope. I visit a rehearsal by the Coastal High Choir. Most members are from the township. I'm very moved by their songs, which are about hope, love and dreams. But I have to move on to Otavi, some 500 kilometers to the north. Tourism is the country's most important economic sector. Most of the lodges and guest farms are still owned by whites, like Gabba's game ranch. What's changed here? The ethnic German Heinz Kuhl turned his father's farm into a guest ranch. He's been supporting his employees for years, such as Hermann Mangela. Hermann has worked his way up to the position as manager. Unthinkable 20 years ago. Heinz explains that he trains his own employees and they now have more responsibilities than before. He can go away occasionally with no problems. The business runs fine in his absence. Hermann takes me to visit the farm workers. It's only been since independence that they've earned a minimum wage. Earlier, they'd have got simply room and board. Today, each family has its own house and earns enough to pay for school for the kids and even to save a bit. Vali Garub is the head mechanic on the farm and looks after all the vehicles and equipment. He's satisfied with his job. He says that 20 years ago they lived in tin shacks with no electricity or running water. Today they have stone houses with indoor plumbing and they pay nothing for it, not even the electricity. 
He says there are now hospitals and their jobs are secure. Herman Mengele shows me around on the way back. He took advantage of his opportunities, gradually moving up. He admits there's still a lot of poverty, but says the standard of living is rising. And he thinks the different ethnic groups see themselves as one people, Namibians. It's a big country with few people, only two million. Uh, but when I see what is going on with the, the, the future of Namibia, it's, it's, it's bright now. It's, to everybody, it's bright. I can see development, school over, and university over, all over uh, Namibia. Exactly. Before I leave, Hermann tells me how to get to the capital, Windhoek, which is some 350 kilometers away. I'm reassured that the people in my homeland are living together happily and peacefully, and it feels good to travel through an African country that is so safe, secure and democratic. Windhoek still seems like a European city to me. Here too, the ethnic groups live and work side by side. But I wonder if I only see the facade. What is needed for Namibia to continue on this positive road? The local arts scene is doing a lot to foster understanding between Namibians. Photographer Tony Figuera often brings together different artists. Let's go and see the others and see what they have to say. We quickly get involved in a discussion with them. Filmmaker Joel Hakali believes that the different ethnic groups know too little about each other and that there needs to be more dialogue. When we didn't deal it with them then, you know, so Independence, I think, means for, for different groups, you know, you know, different generations means something else, you know, for, for, for my parents, for example, independence means there's no more war, there's no more, now they could buy a simple thing like a white bread, they could be at a certain side of town if they can afford to, things like that, but then for me, again, it means it would mean different, and also generation after me, independence means different. Nikki Marais teaches at the Art Academy, and she's noticed that the students are concerned with democratic coexistence, and that's reflected in their art. The change is immeasurable. Hey, Tony, it's massive. You, you cannot imagine 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, living in this country was just, it was impossible to to interact in any kind of sane or rational way with people of different colours. Filmmaker Tim Hubschler wants to see the past confronted more openly. He points out that 20 years ago blacks were fighting with each other too. What I'll always somehow deal with is history. Um, it's not because I'm caught up in it, but I just truly believe that it's um, very significant for us to know where we come from in order for us to actually be able to move forward. For me the big question is what what has not been done that could have been done, you know? And there's certain social fabrics, such as you know, certain social structures of our of our society that have not been met, that could have been better because Namibia with our population and our beautiful country, it's just one of the easiest countries in the world to govern. I've gained a new perspective on my home country. I've learned that Namibians have moved towards each other, despite the many different languages and cultures. I think they've achieved a lot in just 20 years.